an Arizona Lotus Corp radio station. Listen online at KFMA.com. You want it? You got it. Reality Radio done right. right. No nonsense, real and raw, just like you like it. He's corrupt, he's inexperienced, and he lies. Broadcasting from a broom closet in the Arizona Lotus Studios, it's Beef Vegan Presents. <laughs> Yo, welcome back to the show. It's Beefy Geek Presents live from Rock 1 2.1 KFMA, streaming worldwide at KFMA.com on this beautiful Tuesday, January 16th. Good morning, Rico. Good morning. Good morning, Weirdo. Good morning. Let me get you centered in that camera there. Squeeze in. There you go. Yeah. Oh, the podcast broadcast is going to look good today. Good morning, Tucson. Thank you guys for tuning into the show. we got a great one lined up for you to start off this short week. Uh, happy belated uh, Martin Luther King Day. I hope you guys, uh, you know. I don't know. I don't know how you celebrate that. <laughs> volunteer. They're volunteer. Meditate. Yeah. Watch some. Listen to uh, the the speech. Uh, you know, do some research, things like that. All right. Uh, we had a three day weekend. Of course, it was a huge weekend for a lot of different news. Uh, a lot of football. It was a huge football weekend. Of course, you know, we had the NFL oh, playoffs. Yeah. Rico made some money. Almost <laughs> spent it all back. Right. <laughs> yeah. At the end of Degenerate. the playoff weekend, uh, how much are you up? Uh, like 400. Okay. It's, That's not, good. it's, it's not bad. It's not yeah. great. It's not <laughs> 50 grand. Yeah, yeah. He, he's uh. saying it's not great because he was going for those big parlays oh, yeah. and trying to win all the money. But 400, <laughs> that's a that's a major plus, dude. That's a positive before money. your vacation. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 So that's good. Um, you know, they, they had the postponed game in Buffalo because that snow was wild. And then of it's course insane. Yeah, a bunch of videos happening oh, over yeah. the weekend where Buffalo actually offered their fans twenty dollars an hour to come out and scoop <laughs> snow mm-hmm. out of the stands. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then come game. Game day Monday afternoon, uh, they they take a picture of the stadium and there's no snow on the field, but then there's snow still in the stands. Correct. It's a waste of money, you know. Well, and uh, you just throughout luck, the everybody. game, just watching the fans throw it up in the air and throw it onto the field. Yeah, it yeah. became a celebratory thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to be a hardcore football fan in Buffalo, man. And I mean, that's mm-hmm. each and every year. When are they going to finally get a dome? Who knows? But uh, you know, as uh, like it. it for, continues to get worse and i know initially when they postponed the game there was a bunch of naysayers on the internet yeah. because you know grew up in, in my day when i grew up we watched football we didn't cancel it for any weather exactly That's football baby it's funny the boomer sentiment is going around hardcore right now i love it though. yeah because yeah, i grew up in wisconsin so it's like the lambeau field you know you have those guys out there with no shirts on and negative 20 wind chill yeah you're like oh right that's how you do it baby right yeah, when you no. see this you're like oh they could have played in that you're like no i don't know <laughs> yeah dude it's it a little intense a, it gets a 71 one and I'm in a parka, <laughs> like no right. yeah. way. Exactly, but no, even you know, with the field is one issue. But you know, I didn't even consider the stands. I'm like, no, man, you guys would have died. There's no way that anyone could have stayed in there. You all would have looked like Jack Nicholson at the end of The Shining. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just frozen. It would have blanketed you. There, you would have had to dig tunnels to get your way out. Yeah, of of that. So it was crazy. Buffalo won, uh, and I don't know if they're going to be the home team next uh, week, but. It'll be interesting to see, you know, the winter storms, they keep on pounding the East Coast. It makes you feel like great that we live in Arizona mm-hmm. for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, but there is bad football news in Arizona because the major story and takeaway is that Coach Jed Fish uh, abandoned us after three seasons and winning an Alamo a Dome Bowl or Alamo Bowl. And, of course, you know, with U of A, uh, that, that football program, I mean, I remember watching NAU beat them. You know what I mean? So they were at the lowest of the low. Mm -hmm. And then Jed Fish came in with an impossible task, turned this program around. And he did that. And just as we were about to hoist him up on our shoulders and celebrate the man and, and, you know, always, you know, they compare him, uh, any great coach to Lute Olson. Like, yes, you are going to be Tucson, uh, you know, for life. Like, stay with us, Bear ride down. with us. And, and he, he he went on the record. He's being interviewed. And he's like, don't worry, Wildcats. I'm going to be a Wildcat for life. Bear down. And they're like, for life? How long is for life? And he's like, actually, I just signed with Washington. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant was. Yeah. I meant in my heart, right. I'm going to be a U of A Wildcat for life. But in my body, I'm going to be in Seattle making $7.5 million a year. Oh. Peace. Uh, and, yeah, so hopefully we'll have. 
Justin Spears from ESPN Radio will come in and tell us exactly what happened. But I know his co-host, Ali, uh, is pissed. I follow him on Twitter. And he just like he's partying with Jerry Jones right now. He's just they're both just sulking. No, yeah, no. Uh, Ali is just sharing and tweeting things of anger and and not holding back and because he feels betrayed. Yeah, I feel mm-hmm. bad because it's like watching a man uh, disclose that his wife's been cheating on him. You know, like that's uh, like the level of betrayal that Ali is putting out there on in, like Twitter. It makes me feel like it's a, such a personal like burn yeah. and betrayal that I feel bad for him mm. solely. And then the rest of U of A's alum after that, because I'm pretty sure he was a booster and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure yeah. he's had. He was involved heavily. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like a long conversations with Jed Fish and, you know, maybe even had like an eye to eye handshake, like a. Uh, conversation saying hey don't worry i'm with you guys and then went to the kids birthday party type stuff yes you know yeah they were invited to like family functions (laughs) like that kind of stuff Uh, and he's been betrayed so i'm like following him on twitter and it's like the equivalent of a friend of yours uh basically spilling his heart out on social media being like i love that bitch and she left me (laughs) you know like oh (laughs) Oh, could have had everything. <laughs> could have had everything. Could have had it all. Yes. So I think it's appropriate to start off the show with a dedication to Ali um, because, you know, music heals all wounds. And I feel like our our song that we're playing every single day of the month of January uh, ahead of a Dead Poet Society uh, performing at Hotel Congress in May it is, is appropriate because it's yeah. titled Hurt. Mm-hmm. And uh, this will go out to Ali and I guess – you know, all you of a Wildcats fans, because we are hurt because, you know, again, we were lied to this. Uh, he this guy, he seemed different than the rest, you know, and he told us he was going to take care now of us. We have forever. trust issues. Yeah. You know, he told us he loved us. He told us he, he wouldn't go anywhere. And there was nobody he was looking at. We and met then, his mom. Yeah, we did meet his mom, his entire family. And, and then this, as soon as uh, another university with a fat ass came walking by. <laughs> He's gone, <laughs> and we are hurt. So Same here's as the other one. Yeah, Dead Poet Society with Hurt. Uh, we got a great show lined up for you today. Uh, tickets uh, that we're going to be giving away. It's a major concert that's happening in Phoenix. I'll let you know what that is in a little bit. It's Tuesday, so we'll do another round of tap out and so much more. Uh, but we'll kick things off with our mandatory play of Dead Poet Society. Here's Hurt on Rock One Two Point One KFMA. All right, so we're back here live, about to get on the air. Good morning, everybody. Keep those comments coming. Don't lurk. Uh, if you're watching on Twitter or any of that, Rock One 2.1 KFMA, that was Sublime. Of course, Sublime is reunited with Jacob Knoll, which is Bradley Knoll's son. Uh, so it's Jacob, Bud, and Eric, and they're doing some shows. And I expect some major announcements of that trio in 2024. I'll keep you posted if that happens. But it's now uh, 829, and we're live on the podcast broadcast, youtube.com slash beefvegan, on Twitter, on our Facebook page at Rock One 2.1. And Weirdo is here to give us a rundown of all weird news that she came across on the interwebs. What would you find for us, Weirdo? Well, this one it definitely kind of goes for Rico. I have oh. some advice for you. Oh, yeah. no. My dear. All right. So please, as you know, you're going on this amazing trip. Do not ruin it by asking the flight attendants to go on the Mile High Club. Aww. Oh, to join it. It works yeah. every time. Look, no, yeah. it doesn't. Oh. Rico's flight is going to be like 14 hours. Mm-hmm. You know, a great way to kill time on a 14-hour flight. Good way to it, kill two minutes for her. Yeah, exactly. Two <laughs> minutes in the bathroom. Yeah. Great we'll way. make 14 hours fly by. <laughs> yeah. uh, why are you giving him this advice? Weirdo? So yeah. uh, James Warren fin- Finister has caught the attention of FBI after frisky requests that he made uh, flying Spirit Airlines. So he is facing criminal charges after he is accused of allegedly interfering with flight crew members, sexually harassing and assaulting flight attendants and engaging in other disruptive behavior. He is facing a possible maximum penalty of 20 years in prison. Wow. You see, you don't don't do this unless you're a Chad. A Chad would have had no issues. Okay, so explain. How do you be a Chad? Like, what (laughs) what are the qualities of a Chad? If you were six foot five, jacked, rich. Okay. So if you're six foot five, you're jacked and you're rich, then you can make these propositions, right. and it helps if Be you're smart. on a on a PJ, which is a private jet. That's mm-hmm. what rich people call yep. a private jet. Yeah. Uh, I learned this from Kanye West. So, <laughs> if you if you have all those qualifications, then it's okay to throw out that proposition because you're more likely to be received with like a warm response, right? Uh, but if you're anything under that, 
You're not a Chad. Don't do it. You're mm-hmm. beef. Yeah. And you will strike out and get federal <laughs> charges pressed against you. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. That's, that's kind of how it goes. Wow. That's serious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you were a flight attendant, same difference. Like on a long flight, if somebody was overwhelmingly attractive, would you consider it? No, I don't think I would. <laughs> You're just saying that right now because you're in a relationship with three people. Notice the pause. It's my job. Like, whether I was a waitress or a radio host, I prefer not to be sexually harassed. Hey, baby, I can take you anywhere. That's true. this job. Yeah, but there's lots of things that you could do on a long flight that include the word job in the title. (laughs) It is true. Yeah. Yeah. And we work in overtime. Mm -hmm. All right, what else you got in weird news? Well, uh, you know, so right now we're in award season, but strangely, we are also... In a race season. A race season? What do you yes. mean? Yes. Outhouse races. Like, you know, those porta johns in the backyard yeah. that somebody built out of wood? Uh-huh. Apparently, people race them. What? And it's like this whole tradition. There's one city that's been doing it for over 40 years. But the next one that's coming up is going to be in Canada on January 21st. Before they we are get the outhouse so races. Questions. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get into the details of what an outhouse race is, mm-hmm. I'll just let you know that my immediately my immediate thought was like at a music festival and you have those long rows of porta johns and say they like serve bad food and you got to just a bunch of people <laughs> rushing in between sets yeah. to go to the porta john. Mm-hmm. That's an outhouse go, go, race. Go, go, go. That is an yeah. outhouse race so for sure. How do they do it in Canada? Uh, so in British Columbia, they are it's their third annual outhouse race. It starts at 11. Teams of three will be putting their three sided outhouses. So the front is open mm-hmm. to the test by loading them onto skis, sheet metal or whatever else might slide effectively over an ice covered parking lot two members of the team will push while the third will be seated inside and hopefully not using it at the same time ah Mm -hmm. but if they need to go to the bathroom they're in a perfect position Mm -hmm. exactly but so i came across the story and i was like oh this is insane jackson county north carolina also does it trenary uh michigan which is sponsored by pepsi reno nevada does one in october on wheels and then anchorage alaska and another place in washington like i said over 40 years they've been doing this wow yeah and apparently it is like serious there's rules like it has to be made out of wood like it can't be made out of like pvc pipe because it'll crack like Gotta it's be a gas whole powered. culture that's around it. I'll tell you what. We'll look up on YouTube and see if we can find any of this uh, racing, mm. our house racing video so yes. we can see exactly what it is and put a visual mm-hmm. to the description there. Uh, I will say that it, it is Pepsi missing a golden opportunity to rebrand by sponsoring these events and calling themselves Poopsie. It just seems like it would make <laughs> more sense. Oh, that would be amazing. You know? Yeah. I actually have a sense of humor about themselves. And even if like their competition comes in and Coke wants to do it, they could rebrand themselves into coca-cola you know i mean there's lots of different mm. ways well maybe poopsie would have been a Oops. better uh, option Poopsie's there. better yeah so either way uh that is a very odd let's look at some outhouse racing on the podcast broadcast come back with a recap of last night's emmys and more coming up next to be vegan presents you can keep it right here rock one 2.1 or join us youtube.com slash be vegan yeah see i shouldn't have double dipped in my poop jokes see like cruel comedy it's like it's a uh, the rule number two. It's a rule one when it comes to number two, but mm. you could do two jokes when it comes to number one. Very odd. I don't write these rules. I just abide by them. There's and the I, rules. I I knew this. I knew this. And Poopsie was right there. It's safe little poop uh-huh. joke on the radio. Um, Coca Cola sounds like penis. Sounds way too say crap a cola. Well, you know, yeah, I know. I mean, see, it was a reach. It was a reach, and I apologize for that. Uh, but welcome, everybody. And Dave, let's see what you were writing on real quick. Let's see, Dave said, uh, I was coming home on leave from Iraq, and his soldier got his elite membership into the Mile High Club. Okay, hey. do tell. Now, this was in 06. Manny was like, was this 03? Because he's like, I was an elite sh- soldier. Why didn't I get any ass? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Um, explain more, Dave. What exactly happened? And, of course, was he a Chad? Uh, a Chad is somebody who's a tall, good-looking, uh, you know, probably super packed, you know, the whole deal. Okay. This is the link of the outhouse racing. Yes. Good. All right. So weirdo sent this. Let's, let's see what this is all about. Oh, this is ex- amazing. I'm excited. Oh, there's themes. There's just everything. Okay. Nice. The butt hut. Oh, that's a brilliant name too. The Damn it. Yeah, yeah. And then the stills that I found from like the Anchorage, Alaska one, uh, one team was running around and depends over their clothes. 
Okay, really? Okay, uh, so this is the Owl House Racing Competition, which is a 40-year-old tradition. And it seems like there's still a little, like... This is in Washington. It started a, a little late because 40 years old, we already had indoor plumbing mm -hmm. by the time they started this Owl House competition. So it's very, it'd be very interesting to me to... To find out why they would even start this. Drunk buddies have started it. Yeah, we were bored, you know. You have to build your outhouse by wood, uh, certain dimensions. You have to have a toilet. You have to have a helmet. You have to have uh, up on skis. Because uh, there's been some people come through that have made it out of PVC pipe and all sorts of different materials that have been no-goes. It's a good time. It's good redneck fun. All right. Just the fact you got to have a helmet. Safety first. Is that the vlog? Ah, uh, that's funny. They're required to have toilet paper. Okay. I didn't think it would be as hard. It's definitely a lot further than you expect. I think it might be a, a little bit longer than a city block, and it seems like it goes forever. <laughs> I know. like his helmet, a freaking Home Depot bucket. Right. You know, we can't make fun of it because we do rodeo parade here. Mm. So it's the same difference. I wonder how much it would cost to get you sponsored I love on it this. because, you know, it's, it's outhouse. a sponsored outhouse. We love to get together and bring the family together and just honestly just have fun. A good, honest fun and, and compete with everybody. And it's, I don't know, I, I feel like the, the, the camaraderie between all the community is, is the best part of it. Well, this is our 42nd year doing the outhouse races here. Um, no, it's not it's James. Just something, James, you're not even 42 years old. Don't be fucking lying, dude. <laughs> uh, my grandma and uh, a few Great other of the chamber uh, members, uh, 42 years ago, they seen a race over in Idaho and decided that would be kind of a cool thing to do here. The seventh generational outhouse race in 42 years. Yeah. I do want to see the one family in town who has like a pride thing going on with it. Right. Like, our family takes it every year. Right. Best outhouse in Saskatchewan. On their fireplace mantle, it's like 17 trophies yeah. where they won. Yeah. They lose one uh, year. Can't it's like beat the Cowboys. The borders. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, that's interesting and fun and mm -hmm. different. So uh, we should probably do the same and just call them, you know, it's for rodeo day. Uh, and but see, they at least have like icy roads so they mm -hmm. can push it. It'd be a little more difficult to do it on any of our streets because all the potholes and Loose gravel. Right. Reno, Reno, Nevada does it in October on wheels. Mm. Mm. All right. Let's get back on the air before we play some Beastie Boys. And Anthony, I am going to play your request as our single song takeover. Yeah. I recorded that one more minute from Authority Zero earlier. All right. Let's get right into this. Rock One 2.1 KFMA. You know, uh, nowadays it's very hard to make a statement or create a buzz about any new music being released if you're an artist, right? You can't shock the world. Back in the day, uh, Madonna, all she had to do was put on tassels, yeah. you know, and it would be enough headlines to uh, certify her album Diamond, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Nowadays, it, we're so desensitized as a world with the internet uh, that it's really difficult to make people upset. But somehow, some way, Little Nas X, he <laughs> figures out a way. Ooh, which one is it? Okay, so, well, you know, last year, or I think almost two years ago, he shocked the world by uh, doing a, a satanic song, and he, he gave Satan a lap dance, mm -hmm. as you would, right? Uh, this year, to shock the world, he went about face. He did a 180, and he's like, guess what? I am now converting and uh, dedicating my life to Jesus Christ. And and the church, and he means this. Is what he says. He's been going to church, and and he's now like a devout Christian or Catholic. I don't know one of the C's. Uh, and he just released a new single called J Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, the J Christ has actually been accepted and you know revered by none other than the Church of Satan themselves. They <laughs> they are actually huge fans of this. Uh, and recently, he got of course tons of backlash. And apparently he didn't see it coming. He went to social media to address his new single, Jay Christ. And I want to share it with you because, again, he's the only artist in the game right now that is making people upset. And for that, I, I applaud it. So let's listen to what uh, he had to say about Jay Christ. I wanted to not necessarily apologize, but I wanted to explain. I knew, like, there would be some upset people or whatnot. But I also didn't mean to like mock. This wasn't like a you 
to the Christians. Like it was literally me saying I'm back like Jesus. Like that was like the whole thing. I'm not the first person to dress up as Jesus. I'm not the first rapper. I'm not the first artist and I won't be the last. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, if uh, if you beat a dead horse, you will. I mean, you know, like if it's it's been played out, why would you want to keep That's doing that? That's his next controversy is beating a dead horse. <laughs> Literally. And sleeping with it. Yeah. Uh, he does go on to talk a little bit more about his J. Christ clip. I know, like, you know, I, I messed up, like, really bad this time. And I can act unbothered all I want, but it's, it's definitely, like, taking a mental toll on me. I know this is not going to be, like, an immediate, like, swift, everybody, like, moves or whatnot but i do want my christian fans to know that i am not against you ah so mm. that's what happened so when he his whole objective was to shock the world and create a buzz uh and he did so by giving satan a lap dance but then you mess <laughs> around with jesus and people come out of the woodwork like that ain't cool mm -hmm. and now he's feeling like the brunt of it but hey you play with fire you're gonna get burnt he right? totally went the route like i was in the lap dance i was trying to give satan an, ST an std <laughs> before going to jesus yeah, so yeah. It's like then that would have been take him down the al capone way yeah exactly uh -huh. yeah, right. yeah he was, way. it was only a few days ago that it like posted a twitter like to people being like hey you know you didn't believe me when i had the number number one hit and when i came on my next album how many streams it got and it's like now y'all saying uh new s not finna to do nothing at some point y'all gotta realize i'm god's favorite like he's still always making those jokes mm -hmm. right because because obviously he's gay and everybody freaked out about that and he's like nope i'm still the favorite because i'm pushing out number ones what are y'all doing so i, I, I think don't think he should have apologized the best the best troll move that he did and the reason why we're even talking about little Nas x on rock and 2.1 is you got to realize at one point he uh he, he had the biggest country song in the, the country right Right. Uh, it was Old Town Road. It was a catchy song. We all know it. Country people, they ended up eating up and loving it. And then he's like, oh, by the way, I'm super gay, guys. And they're like, wow, <laughs> they lost their mind. Billy, Billy Ray cried. Yeah. Look, we've been two stepping into this the yeah. whole time. Basically. Oh, I love it. Yeah. All right. The conversation is moving on the podcast broadcast, youtube.com slash beef vegan. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, anything we can do to take uh, country music down a notch. Next, they're going to get Wes Scantlin. Ugh. Yes, they are getting West Scantlin. That's a fact, actually. Um, as Puddle of Mud is going country, it's cash in. It is funny, though, thinking every single year is uh, getting duped by a little Nas X event. Yeah. <laughs> like, who's next? He learned it. He learned that we time. learned our lesson. No. Yeah. Damn it. It's annual January 16th. What's little Nas X going to do? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's, that's too funny. All right. Uh, speaking of funny, uh, this morning we kicked things off with the Florida man. It was a Florida man story, actually. Uh, which was our morning moron. And it's, yeah, it was pretty impressive and something that we've never heard before, which is always a rarity when we do this kind of stuff. So if you, in case you missed it, it went a little something like this. Check it out. One two point one KFMA. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. Uh, it is a Tuesday and 6.15 and time for your morning morons. Let's do this. But how about we do this? Go. Whoa. Yeah, our morning we're on today, right out the gate, we're going to start off hot, and we'll do a Florida ma'am story. You want to hear Florida ma'am? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. Florida ma'am, Florida ma'am, catch an alligator in the trash can. If you can't do it, no one can. Come on now, Florida All right, our Florida ma'am of the day is a 42-year-old woman in Florida. Now, she is on probation, I believe. Because she is taking a, a P test. The drug screening is what it's called, mm -hmm. technically. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know how that is. If you're going to take any of these P tests to see if there's any drugs in your system, you got to do so in front of people and have witnesses. And they got to make sure that you're not cheating the system. Right. And they do this because people, time and time again, will attempt to cheat the system. Now, Jessica Beatley, this Florida ma'am, was definitely dirty. And she knew it. And, but she came up with a brilliant idea in her own mind to pass this P-test. And there's no way that they would have even figured it out. So she thought. Uh, she she turned to the only person that she knew that did not have dirty pee. And it's not her aunt, okay? Because her aunt probably uses. It was her aunt's dog. She looked at her <laughs> aunt's dog and she's like, I guarantee this dog ain't doing math. Oh God. Yes. Yes. So this 42 year old woman, Jessica, wow. got caught trying to fraud a court ordered drug screening by using pee that was somehow 
collected from the ant's dog. Oh now, God. I understand this is a morning moron segment, but it's still got to be somewhat genius to be able to collect dog urine somehow. Did she do the pads where she had to, like, wring it out? I have so many questions. So many oh. questions, yeah. right? Now, okay, it sounds like that she was caught with it before submitting it, and then she admitted that it was her aunt's dog's waste. She also provided a valid sample, which is probably not clean. I don't know if we got the results back on that. Uh, but it didn't matter at that point. She was charged with urine testing fraudulent practices. <laughs> urine testing <laughs> fraudulent Animal practices, abuse. yeah. And uh, her scheme would not have worked even if the probation officer didn't see it. Because a uh, drug test can easily uh, tell the difference between human and non-human pee. I was going to say, I really do want to see her Google browser history. So bad. <laughs> I don't he know if you... Dog pee? Yeah, I don't think you'll ever find a link on Cora. Google that uh, or anything that will say, yes, you could use uh, animal urine uh, to mistake or to confuse them yeah. and, and replace with human wow. urine. It doesn't make sense. I mean, it, just even trying to think about it, just made me like three points dumber. Like I was like, "What are you talking about?" Even Chat GPT is like, "You're an idiot. Why are you asking me this?" Right. Uh, but the fact that she was able to scoop it up and then yeah. bottle it and then get her head. <laughs> so oh, yeah, yeah. Now, unfortunately, oh, there is no mug shot. Uh, man, actually, you guys is. want to see oh, her mug shot? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know you do. This is her right here. That's just oh, real clear God. water. That is not far off of smell, what I imagined. I can smell the cigarettes. What did you uh, expect? What did you imagine? That's about what I imagined. I was like, I bet you she's got really bad blonde dye job. Yeah. And a six head. Yeah. She Where does is have her hairline? She's got the Goro hair going on. <laughs> yeah. The Goro hair, which is a Mortal Kombat reference, right? <laughs> yeah. So she just has it kind of uh, buzzed around the side, little ponytail on top. I, I guess it's. Uh, it says a lot about me where I was looking at her and I was like, yeah, it's doable. But, uh, <laughs> she seems fun. Yeah. I, uh, you know that over the weekend, I became a proud father of a, <gasps> an 18 year old adult. Yes. yes. Yeah. My Jealous. daughter turned 18 on Sunday and I did everything I could. Now, Alex, I apologize. I didn't reach out to get flowers for her. I spent a, a lot of other money otherwise, and it's difficult sometimes uh, to uh, give her all these things and feel appreciated about it because yeah. she'll still kind of complain. And I'm like, come on, I raised you better than that. Like she wanted these big oversized balloons and, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, the one eight balloon and also, you know, some Hello Kitty balloons. So I, I'm. Uh, right after the show, I'm searching balloon places and I'm like, oh, Party City is the way to go. Right. I, I thought I was going to go to another location at like a Hobby Lobby um, because it was by the Einstein's uh, bagels. So I went there first. They didn't have them. Then I had to drive. I was on the road for like over an hour. I get all these balloons. I got to stick them in my car. Right. Um, and they're huge. Right. And I'm driving with them and uh, they're kind of blocking my view. But I make it home safely. And then I post it up and everything's good. My daughter comes home. Finally, she comes home late on Friday and she sees them. The first thing she says is like, oh, I wanted silver balloons. And I was like, you. <sighs> My God. God yeah. I, it chilled, right. You're like you're trolling me, right? Yeah. So, you know, we did that. Um, and then she, and then when she didn't think the other accompanying balloons were girly enough, but when I went to Party City and I was like, "Hey, I need these balloons," and she's like, "What? What kind of balloons you want?" I'm like, "The girliest balloons you have." Mm -hmm. I literally said that. I was like, "Give me the girliest balloons," like you know. And uh, that girl failed me, I guess. Um, but we don't uh, describe things that way anymore, sir. Yeah, I do want to shout out and thank <laughs> Chef Gary. Uh, <laughs> Chef Gary hooked me up. We went to Char Vita uh, for a birthday dinner, nice. and he took care of it. Uh, comp the whole bill uh, and of course Charvita has a lot of vegan options mm -hmm. so I had to eat vegan nachos and as much as Chef Gary does great on making those vegan nachos I hate vegan cheese with a passion mm -hmm. it's uh, got such a weird texture it's so bad dude and he did his best and my daughter loved him I hated him Rock 1 2.1 KFMA welcome back to Be Vegan Presents uh, just reminiscing <laughs> over this uh this weekend because i became a proud father of an 18 year old daughter right so she's 100 percent an adult now I even though being adult nowadays means nothing I, <laughs> no, like really, 18, no. you have it to, used to mean something yeah you have to be because think about it what's the what do you benefit from being 18 with the exception of real life consequences like you can't right. commit a felony right uh but you can't <laughs> buy cigarettes right like yeah. what, what, you can vote you can join the military and i don't know who's still buying porn but you can do that 
You can buy porn? Yeah. yeah. But no, nope. see, no, you don't eliminate it. that. It's, it's on the internet. Yeah, eliminate that. The car insurance goes down a little bit? No. no. Not even. Yeah, no, it actually nothing. spikes for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. So, I mean, seriously, such a stupid, like back in the day, and I hate to sound like the get off my lawn guy, <laughs> but at least I had, when I turned 18, that was, uh, I could buy cigarettes. I could go to the casino and, yes. you know, do that. You can't do anything now. And mm -hmm. I kind of feel bad for him on that point of it. But, you know, I, I mentioned it because Veal Vegan, you know, is my only daughter and I've had sole custody of her since she was a toddler. Uh, when we first came down here, she was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. So like, that's the mind yeah. death for me. Like, that's how fast these kids grow up. And yeah. I know a lot of listeners have been riding with me from day one uh, and recognize the name. Say, hey, we did it, guys. We, we, we made yeah, it. I was about say, Congratulations. You have finished your parental contract. Yes. Good job. Uh, yes and no. Technically. It's the bare minimum contract. Get them to 18 alive. <laughs> Right. And the legal obligation. Yeah. Like my oldest turns 20 next month and then my next oldest turns 18 in April. Yeah. So like I'm I'm with you on that because I remember when I had my oldest, I was like doing math in my head. I was like, oh, they'll be 18 when I'm 35. Right. Because I was a young mom. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was like two weeks before they turned 18. I was like, didn't I just have that thought process like last week? Yeah. Like it's a mind. F. How old are you going to be when your youngest turns 18? 48. I had him at 30. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm still going to be youngish. I tell you what, though, I, I kind of miss the, the boat because I was like, damn it. Like, I, 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 I effed up the first time around. I, I definitely wanted to have a kid uh, around pandemic. I mm -hmm. wanted to have another kid and I was close. Uh, and, but I feel like I missed that window now. Yeah. And now I just got to like kick back and I guess be an empty nester and start raging again. What's cocaine like? <laughs> <laughs> what well, haven't I tried yet? Well, that's crazy because I was 17 and 19, my two oldest. And if I had just stopped there, because I did know somebody else in high school that I get young, mm -hmm. like they've they've been done for a year. Yeah. With So I could have been done this year with kids. Free you to go. Up. Yeah. I did. I, I mean, I love my youngest. I yes. think he might be my favorite. Make sure that you tell my other ones loudly. Uh, that, uh, you know, yeah, it's just, to be young again, like to be able to like relive that, like no yeah. responsibility. You're making me depressed now. You know that, right? Why? Like everything you're saying is making me very, very super depressed. I don't know. Are life you? It's gray and horrible with kids. There's no happiness in my life. It's a void of depression. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to get them out of the house so I can actually breathe air and live life. Uh, Jeff, I'm like, spend Jesus. your own money. Jeff on the stream said when he turned 18, he bought smokes, porn, scratchers, and then went to the casino. Then they changed the law and had, and then he had to wait again. Oh, Got him. you didn't yeah. get grandfathered in. No, nope, but uh, that Damn. sucks. All right, so we're keeping the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast. Uh, you know, coming up on the podcast broadcast, I'm actually going to have one of my favorite S talkers, AR from the Tucson Roadrunners. She'll be joining us. Uh, she's a ball buster, and mm -hmm. you'll understand why I have her on here next. So stick around. It's Rock One Two by One KFMA. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we, Rico, you don't understand the joys and the tears that children bring you. Like you got to celebrate 18. Uh, my 14 year old. Uh, freaking went dark on us mm. we didn't know where they were until like after midnight they didn't tell us where they were at they turned their phone it off it was a so whole funny. Thing. 14 it's so funny dude reading these uh online threads about parenting too like back even like in the 80s and 90s before the internet era basically right. when kids yeah. the whole latchkey kid and running mm -hmm. outside you know when the street lights came on that's when you came home that whole era of raising children is like so gone now or just right. like they're they're just digitally glued, and there's really not that sort of like parenting where it's like, well, you're you're gonna have to learn how to you know deal with getting hurt and deal with. Wow. Well, the pro so the problem with our 14 year old was uh, she was like, oh, I'm just gonna go for a walk. We're like, all right, cool. It's like five. They'll be home in an hour, whatever. And then it got closer to being dark, and we're like, that's weird. Like, yeah. what the hell? And then it was like last known location, Alvernon and Third. I'm like, did my Jeez. kid get snagged? Like yeah, that was yeah. the concern. Legit concern yeah. Like that was legit. Like mm -hmm. we have no idea what happened, right? Because iPhones, did you know that you can put it on airplane mode? Like you can the turn kids off. Were tracking completely. Like yeah, exactly. Without having to have the passcode, you can do it from the lock screen. Oh jeez. So mm -hmm. we were going through worst case scenarios. Yeah. It was awful. But then so, that's like nothing happened. Like what? <laughs> oh, that's exactly yeah. their attitude. They don't <laughs> think they've done anything wrong. And we're like, really? really? Yeah. You'll see one day. I know. Yeah, well, what I did I to try to be cool uh, for my my daughter was um, I let her have like a little sleepover, right? And party mm -hmm. it up. And uh, so she did that. But her her friends, her and her friends are so lame. They're in bed before like midnight. 
So I thought, I, you know, like I, I went out uh, and I was like, you guys can have the place to yourself. Have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be cool. I uh, bought a bunch of food, snacks, things like that right. to have a little party. And, you know, like if it was me, 18 years old, I'm not going to bed until the sun's up. Right. And probably like a th few hours after that. Right. 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 Uh, yeah. And so I come home around uh, 1145 and sure enough, all the lights are out. They are past the fuck out. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> so do you feel like you succeeded as a parent? Or do you feel like you failed? In a way, no. I, I feel like I succeeded for okay. sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, my daughter's not doing meth. So, <laughs> knock on wood. That's a good, yeah, good that, thing. That's a win. That, that is, is a win. win dude. When she when she turned it, it would be funny as hell if you actually turned it around and made it like a party for you to be free. Well. <laughs> Had your own balloons in the If we in were the room. up in Phoenix, to be honest with you, if I linked yes. up with, like, my best friend, Corey, we, like, you know, like, a lot of my friends, uh, and I know a lot of people on the stream, you probably do this as well, when you, any kind of, like, a celebratory reason yeah. is a reason to get together, get drunk and rage. And it's, right. it's the parents that party harder than the kids. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like how it, it was. And I do feel bad for her because all, most of our family and friends are up in Phoenix, but she still ended up having a good time. And she hung out with her boyfriend and she did a little concert thing. And yeah, yeah, it's it, good. Yeah. Funny you mention that too, like working at the bar. I've noticed that pattern so many times where the people that cause the most trouble are our parents. Yeah. And yeah. like older adults. I'm just like, how is it a college town? And these guys are cool and chill and very polite. Like, hey, have a good night, man. These, right. And they come out just like stumbling and raging and being caring. I'm like, there's a couple things. So funny. The internet uh, definitely made our generation uh, of kids nerds and also legal weed. And the strength of, weed, yeah. you know, because it makes it to the point where these kids don't want to do anything, but they get stoned and they're out. Like, <laughs> at least we had the swag uh, back in the day. We had to smoke a lot of it and it took a lot longer to get to pass out like quality. <laughs> right. But now you got pens, you got all this. I was going to say they have one drink and they just do a weed pen in the bathroom. Like, I'm chilling, man. Yeah, they don't even want to drink. <laughs> yeah. dude. Like my daughter didn't get drunk. They didn't they wow. didn't drink, do any of that stuff. Um, gummies now yeah yeah so like it was probably something along the lines there and they were uh in bed <laughs> <laughs> after eating a bunch of frozen pizza before midnight meanwhile mom's over there doing a corn whiskey shot and like a ham beer <laughs> uh -huh. like going crazy yeah <laughs> i mean I yeah no it's gonna trip you out for a while to be like i have an adult child this is yeah. so weird yeah but she's not planning on going anywhere anytime soon which is great yeah. you know um and it's fine but at the same time, I'm like, oh, it, it is any of these milestones, like the same thing happened when I turned 40. It, you get very reflective mm -hmm. of uh, the past leading up to it. And so that was one of the moments during the weekend. I think yesterday where I'm just kind of like, you know, looking at old pictures of her as a kid and then just kind of reminisce and be like, man, it does mm -hmm. fly by. Yeah. And you've been doing so good with all these video edits. Why don't you make one for her with like all of that and like make it all misty eyed? He's too busy trying to get the right gifts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Trying to get the right balloons. Trying to get the right that balloons. she was pissed about anyway. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, so, like, and then I got her uh, gift certificates and, and a card. Um, And so that cost money. But then also I went in with my mom and my dad uh, to get a, um, a what, like a $700 vanity, right? It's oh, wow. It's expensive as shit. And so th it's ordered and it's on its way. And so this is a gift that is torturous for me because then I have to build this son of a bitch mm. and this thing's going to be massive and there's lights involved and there's all like, I'm not looking forward to this. It's probably going to take me a couple of days. I'm going to be cursing, saying F my life the entire time <laughs> that I do it. I'll probably call Rico. He'll be in Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's uh 2 a.m. I can't help you. This yeah. task rabbit still. A thing. I drink some mystery liquid. I don't know where I am. I know. All right. So here's the deal. We're playing one more minute right now for Anthony. That's a single song takeover. Uh earlier today we had Rico do a five-star review. It was fantastic. He went French. Oh wee oui, wee. Oui. Yes. And in case you missed it, one little song like this. Check it out. That's a good example of a KFMA classic uh, to play by request. That's going out the weirdo. Uh, it's her favorite system of a down song, Lonely Day, and Rock One 2.1 KFMA. If it's your first time listening to the show, you should know that our good friend Rico, uh, he is uh, one of the best local consumers that this city has ever known. He goes Thank out you. to locally owned establishments and he partakes, he spends money, and he just uh, embraces the entire experience. And when he has a good time, he immediately rushes to Google reviews after 
to leave a review. I'm trying to help Tucson thrive, Beef. And you're doing a great job. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here's Rico's five-star review. Who'd you review this week? A little place called Genie's or G- Genie's French Cafe. It's French, so Genie's. there is no proper way to pronounce French it. Cafe. I, it. It starts as like G-H and yeah. Elaine's. Uh, who knows? What, the the French Cafe. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's a fantastic place right there on Gam- uh, Campbell, right? Prince. Oh, Prince. Okay. Yeah. Prince and Campbell. So uh, what was your experience? What'd you write? Well, you know me. I'm always on the lookout for something, anything to make me seem more cultured and smarter than my peers. True. This includes talking about A24 films before the trailers even drop. <laughs> Notice how I call them films, not movies. Ah, It yes. also includes booking flights to random exotic locales just so I can take photos from my dating profiles and put entrepreneur, day trader, and philanthropist in my bio. And also includes me walking around art galleries, nodding at everything with a fancy scarf, even in the summer months. Oh. That being said, when I saw there was a place called Genie's French Cafe, <laughs> and it was spelled with two F's in cafe instead of one, I had to go check it out. Oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. Had to. Uh-huh. It was near the Catalina foothill, so I had to be prepared to bring my A game for this brunch adventure. I streamed Amelie and Jean-Luc Godard films be- repeatedly without the subtitles to get in my Parisian mood. Oh, nice. And ordered a Red Wool French beret and an obnoxious pair of oct- octagonal-shaped sunglasses to wear indoors from Amazon. And then I spent about 20 minutes transforming my facial hair into more French wannabe Johnny Depp style than my normal ambiguously sad Mexican style. <laughs> I decided to come inside just after they opened to make an impression. I had to find an open seat and establish my cultural dominance to get the full experience. It was pretty busy with the breakfast crowd, but I brushed by several people arrogantly holding my head up and saying, Excusez-moi, loudly over and over and using my scarf as a slapping device to let them know I wasn't just some normie. (laughs) I sat down at a small table right before some stupid slack-jawed family of four tried to soil it with their American ignorance and immediately adjusted my beret and pulled out a newspaper to read while crossing my leg. (laughs) I noticed a few of the waitstaff attending to the crowd, and so I pretended to read the newspaper while progressively coughing out loud to get some attention. When that wasn't working, I figured it was time to level up my French presence and pulled out a Winston cigarette and lit it with a candle I snuck in with me. (laughs) Of course, I immediately received angry glares because people don't know how to relax in this country. Nope. I saw a father begin to approach me and I was ready to throw fisticuffs, but luckily for him, a waitress rushed over and said, Sir, you can't smoke in here, to which I replied, Tremont stupid. I burned the cigarette out of my tongue and said, Excusez-moi, to go sit outside on the patio instead. <laughs> Fortunately, there was a smaller table available outside as well, and jokes on them, it felt more Frenchy to be outside anyway. That's true. Mm. I let another Winston and resumed my newspaper reading, and almost immediately that same waitress came out to tell me I couldn't even smoke outside. What? I yelled another French term I googled. Oh, LA. Oh, come on. And then flicked it away. Then I put on a sad French face while imagining a bunch of accordions playing in my head as if I were in a foreign film. <laughs> she knew kicking me out was going to be a problem, so she just asked what I wanted to drink. And since every French person in every movie drinks espresso out of a tiny cup, I ordered that and said, tiny cup, oui? And then she <laughs> nodded. Oui. <laughs> she asked if I wanted anything to eat, and I, without making eye contact, said loudly, Omelette du fromage. She looked at the menu and said, well, we have the omelette du, du, du soleil, which is three cheese, garlic, and herbs. And I said, no, 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 no. Omelette du fromage. And had to repeat it over and over until she rolled her eyes and walked away. And then I yelled out, sacre bleu, which apparently interrupted a lot of patio conversations. Oh, no. And everything finally got quiet so I can continue reading my newspaper. <laughs> When my tiny cup espresso arrived, I sipped it as pretentiously as possible. And when my omelette du fromage arrived, I ate it while twirling my mustache and making unsolicited eye contact with everyone around me. (laughs) My authentic French experience even warranted me leaving a tip. Oh, Never had to do that back home in France. (laughs) Overall, fantastic experience, and I made my impression. Cinq étoiles. Five uh, stars. Wow. That's an wow. actual five star review that you could see on uh, Yini's uh, French Cafe. Yeah. And so you recommend that if anyone goes there, they lean into the French, uh, you know, uh, the French antre- 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 ancestry. Damn oui. it. Ancestry? Oui. Yeah, that's what oh, I was okay. trying to say. Oui, oui. Um, oui. Even if they don't have it. Uh, that's right, that's right. Uh, oh, oui, oui. Yeah. you're still doing it. Yeah. I only nice. know one French word. What is your one French word? 
Menage a Trois. Oh, oh yeah. you. Ah. All right. Well, that's a five star review from Rico. If you uh, go to the Google reviews and you come across Rico's five star review, make sure you leave him a five star on his five, five star. Think a trois. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to hit the reset. Be back with your F My Life. Shane from Tucson Games and Gadgets is going to be in studio. We'll do another round of tap out. And we'll have so much more, including weird news, and weirdos. So keep it right here. It's Rock 12.1 KFMA. All right, we are back here live uh, playing Blink-182. We just played Anthony's uh, One More Minute by Authority Zero. Excellent request. I got a bunch of them today. And, of course, I did have somebody call uh, and request some classic rock from ACDC. <laughs> Thought it was uh, Aaron 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 Aaron. grab a seat right there. AR, howdy. So, I have uh, AR in studio, she is a ball buster and she works with the Tucson Roadrunners and squeezing closer to Weirdo. Don't be afraid, of Weirdo. So, you'll be on camera. Uh, and so you know, we have games all this week, and I need to hit up Mucho to make sure I have tickets to give away. But I just saw that we won last night a three to one. Yeah, Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you guys don't understand how good the Roadrunners are this season. They're they're, they're kicking ass. It's now. I think it's the record is like twenty two, ten, and like one and one and one and one and one and one and something like that. Uh, it's a weird like hockey stuff. So uh, you guys got to go out to the games. It's super fun. And it looks like we're gonna go to the playoffs, which means oh snap, I can get some extra money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, how you doing, Ar? I'm good. I'm good. How Welcome to the studio. Take it in, and don't start getting nice on me now. Uh, you know. <laughs> You're hyping her up like she's a jerk. She's a meanie. <laughs> she, oh man, she seriously busts my balls like no other uh, <laughs> at the games, each and every game. And she just tried to do that on the phone. She was late. She's like, "Oh, I'm on beef time." I'm like, "Ah, you don't say that right now." <laughs> I understand. Yeah. So, um. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about here. And then tomorrow is going to be another game that uh, the girls did. So we had Gaz and Crystal host the games last night. How'd they do? I wasn't even there. I was at my other job. So um, ah. <clears throat> our interns were in charge of the game, and they said it went well. And They're lying to you. I, I hope it was all right. <laughs> I'm sure it was fi fine. I'm sure they were fantastic. Uh, but, you know, like AR, she, it's funny, too, because AR is actually a former D1 athlete. Uh, and so, like, she was a part of the U of A volleyball team. Beach volleyball. A beach volleyball. Yeah, and so there is a difference. Oh, Huge difference. Right. Now, what um, is fun to fall in? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. That's it. <laughs> As opposed when to the you basketball. Get a little court. bit more dirty. <laughs> yeah. <but. laughs> right. Yes. And we're do me a favor. No more prep. When we're on podcast and stuff, mm -hmm. no more computer stuff. Okay. Uh, it'd be in the conversation. So we got three seconds. Let's get on the air. <laughs> Rock one, 2.1 KF, man. Welcome back to Be Vegan Presents. So uh, we got AR joining us, and she's a part of the Tucson Roadrunners. And uh, a former beach volleyball D1 athlete for U of A, uh, U of A, like uh, this university. What do I, how do I say it? University of Arizona. <laughs> no, I know that. You know, the, the big the takeaway. School? Yeah. So when we started off the show today and we talked with Ju Justin Spears from ES Radio, was, uh, ESPN Radio was uh, Jed Fish bailing on us, right? As a U of A, U of A alum, do you feel like, you know, daddy left? Is it like a situation like that, or <laughs> he went out to get a pack of smokes so, yeah, and never I, came back? Yeah. yeah are you are you heartbroken? Um, I I am a little indifferent about it. You know, it was kind of expected that he was just gonna up and leave in a couple of years, as that's his reputation. Right. Um, but at the same time, he kind of did what he was supposed to do. Was it he kind of turned the program and now we just have to hope that uh, maybe he take too many. Things maybe guys him. out there should take like, uh, you know, take note of this because <laughs> uh, basically what you're saying is he had pattern behavior. We knew he was going to oh, leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We knew it. Right. And so we shouldn't be shocked by it. But he did a good job while he was around. Also, our president hired him, not our athletic department. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, now, you used to be a D1 athlete. Did you get a full scholarship for being a beach volleyball player um, of U of A? So beach volleyball is a sport where they don't give full scholarships. But See, between, between my athletic and academic, I was full. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that's how cool. you got it. And then so you I, moved here to be on that team, right? Yes. So did you live by a beach growing up? No, I'm from Phoenix. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, how she did went you to get Sandbar in? a few times. bring the sand. Yeah, it's all called like kitty litter and stuff. And yeah. that's what <laughs> yeah, that's call it. Yeah. Desert sand is much different than yeah, beach sand. Yeah, and it, it before it was beach volleyball, and everywhere it wasn't on the beach, it was called sand volleyball. And yeah. 
you know, people got offended because it was the full sport is beach volleyball. So we were like, let's just change it. <laughs> yeah. So what were some of the cool takeaways from your run of being a beach volleyball athlete for university of arizona did they take care of you you go get to travel all over the country oh, yeah and my mom was a softball player at u of a so we're ha we have a little bit of a legacy like a athletic oh, legacy going and yeah. she loves to give me shit for how well you we can't were say treated. that sorry yeah that's okay <laughs> she loves to give me crap for how uh well they were treated or how well we were treated compared to her. Okay, oh, so yeah. so back in the day when she was going to school, which I'm it assuming was like, was like the nothing. '90s, early 2000s, yeah, 90s. she they were treated like crap. As a U of A softball player, which is a big deal because the softball program is something that yeah. they covet she and they're two, proud of. She won two World Series too with them, so and they like, still treated her like crap. <laughs> not treated like crap. It's just the they differences, the, the advancements in the money that is provided yeah. okay so, so like we get we would get like a free breakfast every single day and she goes i lived off of baked potatoes and slim fast so they wouldn't <laughs> even feed them it's a good wow. diet. yeah they yeah I, I mean it also depended on how much money you were given like not everyone's scholarship is the same right so you get different things and yeah so yeah. besides free breakfast what else did you get lots of gear it also depends on the team our team provided more gear than we did meals yeah so we got a lot of shirts tank tops hats shoes pants leggings everything now did they not want to feed you so much because you guys are basically in like bikinis and you <laughs> want to keep your like bikini posture looking as best as possible college beach volleyball does not play in bikinis it's was it one piece tank tops and spandex still a bikini <laughs> and a tank top is a top and then there's a bottom so it goes all the way down though you can't see the stomach all that stuff the tan line's horrible <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <All right>. horrible <laughs> that's fair uh uh so uh, what other ways do they treat you guys better than the previous generation um probably travel a little bit that depended on schedule too like i think last year was my senior year we went to hawaii which was really fun. And our coach was like, we're going to stay for a couple extra days. So they actually get to enjoy it. Nice. And one of my roommates, teammates is from Hawaii. So she like showed us all the secret spots and everything, which was really cool. Oh, snap. Nice. Um, yeah. Just some, just some extra perks and the pac 12, like the tournament, you get a bunch of stuff last year. Every single person who was in the pac 12 tournament got a Lululemon backpack. Oh, mm. which is really, yeah, really <laughs> I cool. See. I don't think my mom got any of that. But. No, <laughs> no. So what's the game plan after uh, doing D1 sand volleyball? Either you turn pro or no? Yeah, and pro is really hard. It's, right. You are paying for everything. You can win a tournament and still lose money yeah. just because mm. of cost mm. of everything. So it's a lot of getting yourself sponsors. It's a lot of a lot it's a wealthy sport mm. a, lot of people, uh, yeah. a lot of people Rich who people play sport. beach volleyball are right. on the beach in hermosa or huntington and, and going to a polo tournament stuff. right afterwards right, right. Yeah. so when the right. poor people show up being like yeah hey, can i get next game they're like Ugh. no you can't scrub they're get like, out of here you gotta pay us for right. the court and you're yep. like okay well yeah so i uh, so how quickly did you lose your muscles as soon as you ended the season right because <laughs> a beach volleyball you got to be toned from like head to toe Mm -hmm. And there's muscles you didn't even know you have grow. Uh, but if you don't use it, you lose it. So did you drop like 20 pounds of muscle within like three months? Um, I, I build muscle very quickly. I used to be a swimmer too. So I was like shredded when I was a swimmer. Uh -huh. Like I was like eight with like an eight pack and everyone's like, what are you doing to your child? To my parents. And they're <laughs> like, she's just swimming. Yeah. But like with this, we did, it's a lot more cardio than lifting. Cause we still have to be like really light and quick. Yeah. Um, and I took a very long time off of the gym when I was done. My body is hurt bad. Uh, so I actually just started lifting again. I haven't lost any. I've lost some weight, but. What about your butt? Did you lose your butt? No. Because that's a lot of jumping <laughs> up and down, right? Mm -hmm. I would assume that's the first thing to go. The butt? Yeah. Yeah. That, that Makes, has to it's be. science. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> if science. you're in sand jumping up and down all day, yeah. that's huge for the glutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and if you're not doing that, then your glutes go away. Yeah. yeah. I've lost I've lost some in my legs for sure, but I think my butt is no, so. it's they're connected. Do you think you'd be weirdo <laughs> in an arm wrestling competition? This is weirdo, by the way. No, I do not. <laughs> well, my my right shoulder is my good one, but it's my, my or my right arm is my good one. My shoulder is messed up. Oh, oh that's yeah. rough. 
Yeah, well, at least you got an education out of it. Yes. All right. Well, we have a lot that we're going to get to on the podcast broadcast. So we're going to keep this moving to the stream, youtube.com slash beefvegan. When we return, there's a bunch of old school words that, uh, you know, somebody's arguing should be introduced or reintroduced to our vernacular. <laughs> I'm going to share some of those words with you next to see which ones will pass our test. Maybe we'll start using them on the show. Uh, and that's going to be next on Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. It's crazy to watch, too, with, like, old-school athletes or anybody that's kind of grown up, like you said, since childhood up until now. If you lose track of that body momentum and the workouts, mm -hmm. your body's, like, your mus literal muscle memory is, like, so intact that if you get right back into it, you can get, you know, right back to where you were, basically. Well, yeah, easy for you to say. I mean, you may... Oh, I'm nowhere up. close to where, you know, where I could be, <laughs> but, yeah. All right. But still. It's, it's, no, that's what I'm saying. It's cool to look at athletes and be like, damn, that's, like, a crazy thing to witness. Do you compare yourself to your brother? I saw your brother's... Oh, dude, we have a thing, yeah, where it's, like... Yeah, I saw your brother's post on Instagram uh, just yesterday. Where the boxing? He's, yeah, boxing. He's always in that gym He's box. beating up a body bag. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and he's doing pretty good. He's got a lot of energy. That's young man He energy. brings the energy when he comes home, too. It's so funny. He's like, let me tell you some techniques with Muay Thai. I'm like, are you in, in tournaments? Are you a champion now? He's like, no, there's a guy at the gym that shows me some moves, and he's like a pro. Oh and he's like, but he acts. He's, <laughs> <sighs> the arrogance. Yeah. I love it. Uh, do you think he's a psychopath? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll give you a couple of examples. I asked this <laughs> I love, question. I love him. He's a psych he's a lovable psychopath. Okay, well, you know, and you'll be able to check this out and see if uh, he checks the boxes because it's weird. You know, when I come across certain stories, sometimes they complement each other and I kind of lump them together. <laughs> and this week, the start off this week is signs that you're a psychopath or you're dating a psychopath. Uh, and oh, these are always fun. <laughs> yeah. So there's a physical sign to look out for. And then there's also a certain uh, traits of what you what you're into that might make a sign that you're a psychopath. So we'll start off with the signs uh, that you might be into. Uh, so let me pull this up real quick. Uh, they say, according to the this survey, scientists uh, say that if you like dark chocolate or strong black coffee, you might be a psychopath. The 2016 study has surfaced online that showed that having a preference for bitter foods could indicate that someone has a dark side with a psychopathic, antisocial, and sadistic <laughs> personality. <laughs> right? Like, well, with, consider like, me Charles Manson. Bitter and salty foods? Not salty. Okay, uh, just bitter. Uh, yeah, okay. just bitter. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, half, why, half, yeah. Half red flag. Yeah, I mean, See, I would posit. Okay, so I, I do like the black coffee, right? Okay. Dark chocolate, cacao. It's it's healthier and you, it's a, it's in a acquired taste. Mm -hmm. But I draw the line of people. I don't do this, but people that eat bagged pickles, or eat pickles raw out of a bag, or just delicious. in public. Those See, are that, bitter. That's pickles. psychopathy to me. If yes. you eat pickles, just pickles by themselves. That's, I don't know. That's a psychopath. I don't think. I mean, pickles weren't mentioned anywhere in this study because it's written by a psycho. No. <laughs> And I don't think anyone on this stream or watching would uh, be surprised if you check off the characteristics of a psychopath test. I don't eat bag pickles. I'm good. Yeah, again, you're the only one that's talking about pickles. I don't think so. <laughs> well, right, right now, I've got a list of my exes and current partners in my head. So. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and what they had to eat and what they uh -huh. like to eat? Yeah, okay. my boyfriend loves dark chocolate and bitter foods. So already, wow. like that's what I'm saying. But he doesn't drink coffee, so it's like. Uh... But if he did, he'd probably drink it black. All right. So this this Maybe. this study uh, was conducted by the University of Innsbruck in Austria. Mm -hmm. uh, they surveyed the taste preference of 953 Americans, and they showed a significant link between the increased enjoyment of bitter foods and heightened sadistic uh, proclivities. So what's this mean? According to Psychology Today, the term everyday sadism uh, that the study uses to describe what people who like bitter taste enjoys refers to people who take pleasure from ordinary experiences in which cruelty is vicarious, meaning they love it, including hurting others and watching others suffer. Uh, do you like dark chocolate or milk chocolate, AR? Milk chocolate. She's just saying that. No, I, dark I, chocolate actually hurts my stomach, so I don't eat so it at all. it's practical, not a taste Okay, thing. well, now oh, there's a physical no. test. <laughs> Daily Mail shared this earlier this morning. There's a physical test that you could okay. be able to tell if, if you might be prone to uh, psycho uh, psychopathic traits, okay? Look at your hand. Look at your index finger and your ring finger. Is your ring finger longer than your index finger? Oh, I've heard about this. It is. Yes. 
Leonard, no, my index finger is just longer than my right Look at finger. That. The only one with empathy on this show that's not a psychopath <laughs> is weirdo. Um, which what? I, I, yeah, I, I could actually see that coming. So let me see that hand again, AR. You, you got psycho fingers? Yes, you do. Oh my god, oh, look how, wow. look how my long. left one is like overpowering. Yeah, that left, <laughs> that left ring finger is almost a solid inch longer than your index okay. finger, meaning <laughs> that you're a serial killer. Rico, <laughs> just edging it out. Yeah. Okay. For, for, how much do you bite your nails, a bro? Lot. Holy yeah, crap! Get well, off my sign. back. That's another sign of psychopath. But oh, uh, is it on the list too? Uh -huh. It's one I'm, I'm adding to the list. <laughs> yeah, yes. when I'm playing Q Lazarus, watching a woman in a well, I just bite my nails. I'm sitting there. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm just basically writing down things that Rico does for my study. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, on the list. Science, psycho. Signs a psychopath would do. Traveling right. randomly. Yep, psycho. Yeah. So this this study check. Oh wait. Um, here it is. I take this out. You want to get away? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you want to get out of this conversation. Uh, so, no. yeah, uh, this is the 2D, 4D ratio. Um, and <laughs> scientists have found <laughs> that the ratio between your ring and index finger has a link between uh, psychopathy, substance addiction, and antisocial behavior. Interesting. Uh huh. And then they show uh, the joke. Fletcher, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the way that you test this, how to measure your finger, you got to straighten your fingers. At the palm of the hand, I mean, you can see it. I was surprised because mine is like edged out just a little bit. It's close to being tied. The middle finger, of course, being the longest. Right. What up? Always. Um, but yeah, the base of your finger, you select the crease of your palm and then you mark it with a pen. So I guess you got to even measure it just from where the base is. Uh, but yeah. So three out of four people here could be psychopathic. Yeah. Three out of four. Cool. Yeah. And congratulations. Yep. You are yep, our yep. angel. I'm like, do I need to put in a resignation? <laughs> Why? You're yeah, afraid to hang out with swivel. psychopaths? This just always They're reminds fun. me, too. You can just make any infographic you want. It's like legitimized, legitimized on the internet. It's going to make a thing. Like, if you well, have a, yeah, you have to believe a everything beauty you mark on your it. hand. Well, you I mean, gotta... At least one of us has three bodies buried in the backyard. So... <laughs> Um, okay. Yes. <laughs> no. Sure. No. Uh, look at it. this. This wasn't a, like a meme that I came across on my like my uncle's Facebook page. Right. No. There are actual like you know uh, universities behind this study that are, are you know legitimize this idea. Now it doesn't mean that if your like ring finger is longer than your index finger that you like enjoy murdering people. Right. Yes. You just might have psychopathic traits. Uh, and something to th consider next time, say, like for guys, when they get on their knee to propose to their, you know, woman and she says yes, and you go slide the ring on, look. and then you notice how long that ring finger is, and you're like halfway up, you're like, you know what? I changed my mind. <laughs> Weird. It doesn't fit right. I'll have to get this resized. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what it is. It's a resizing thing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, but I found that interesting. And again, those are two separate stories that I just kind of combined because that's our running theme there, right? Like, oh, uh, today's show brought to you by, uh, are you dating a psychopath? <laughs> Short answer, usually yes. You know, have you ever had a crazy ex-boyfriend, AR? Or no. are you too, um, I, I want to say, like, stubborn or tough that you well, scare off the psychopath? current boyfriend is the only boyfriend I've had. I was, oh. I was pretty picky back in the day. Mm. So mm. I was, yeah. Good for you. So at what point did you lower your standards? <laughs> he uh he proved himself. I'll say that. Yeah, no, I know him. He's a good dude. Yeah. Uh but, but yeah, you went from being pretty picky. I was pretty picky. <laughs> no, I'm living with the I'll guy. Give a chance. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Know. And you know what well, rent's pretty high, so my standards <laughs> right. exactly. went low. <laughs> in this economy. Yeah. Now you went from no relationships to full blown relationship and living with a guy. Mm -hmm. Uh what's the most surprising thing that you've noticed and learned? learned when living with a dude because i imagine you probably only lived with uh like women since you became an adult and a student so this is a, like a drastic flip yeah i have an older brother but he moved out um pretty like right after high school mm -hmm. um to join the navy but um so we always had our own bathrooms too so sharing a bathroom is definitely interesting oh the yeah beard, the beard in the sink drives yep. me crazy <laughs> and, then he go, and then i'm like okay i'm hair. gonna wash this down and he goes don't put it in the sink it's gonna clog it like then what do we do with it 
burn it. Well, well, you, we just, wait, oh, oh, on fire? you scoop it up and you put it in what I do. Cans? I scoop it up, I put it in a toilet and I flush it. So if that's the case, mm-hmm. uh, because it's been several males that I've lived with and they go to, you know, manscape down under. Yes. They shave it into the toilet and flush it. Is that going to mess up the plumbing? No. Okay. Because, well, it, first of all, it drives me nuts because there's like all these like <laughs> rando hairs. You got to do a wipe around the bowl. But it. no, that's what you do. You know, the funniest Fucking thing. Boys you, are gross. Did you ever watch them like uh, trim up their pubes over the toilet? Yes. It's <laughs> funny. It's it a straddle so, you got to do. Oh, my God. It is hilarious. Like, I was getting into the, the shower positions. and like my boyfriend's going to like straddle. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trimming. And I'm yeah. like, I've never witnessed this in person. Yes. What? It, the, I'm it like, is... this is the most unattractive thing. <laughs> I, know. I got back in the shower. I was like, I can't watch this. Yeah. It, you Absolutely have to not. straddle it. You have to straddle it. And, and then, you know, if you aim it right, it goes straight in uh, to the toilet and you're good <sighs> to go. And you hope that the, the pubes don't stick on the side, uh, which is a possibility as well. But that's but what you learn. But it's the whole, learned. like, you're, like... <laughs> He had his butt like all like forward, and I'm like, why, why is it look like a frog is hanging over? The toilet? Okay, yeah, so he's yeah, he's he's kind of sloping it, right? He's just like, yeah, oh, yeah. And, and looking like but, that, like, I but get also it. like in a squat at the same time because he's six one, like it was a whole thing. He slope in a squat, yeah, or a squat, yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. It's that's gonna a, work out, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good on his core. Oh, he's gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna show this to him later. It is relatable though. You gotta yeah. do it. The manscape, mm-hmm. and, and that's where it is. And hopefully, your boyfriend isn't trimming his pubes in the sink. And hopefully, he's doing the toilet technique. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, but you don't know. That's the best part. <laughs> no, and I know. they look the same. Wow, let's get on the air. No cursing. Rock One Two Point One KFMA. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. Uh, learning a lot of stuff on the podcast mm-hmm. broadcast today. You can join us youtubecom slash vegan. But let me go through this list because uh, there's a couple reasons why I waited till now to share this list. Uh, one is because we have Ar with us, and she's uh, what 22, 23 years 23. old. Twenty three. Oh, so baby. what's that generation oh, called? I don't even know. Yeah. See, you are guys you don't Jesse? even know your own generation. I don't know. Are I think you, you're, I think you're one still of those Gen Zoomers. Two thousand. You're a Zoomer. Yeah, so you're still Gen Z. Gen Z. I think Zoomer would I don't probably. Know if that's an insult it is. Uh, so <laughs> I, I think Zoomer would probably be the best way to describe this generation because they went through the pandemic, right? And and essentially a lot of their friendships were like Zoom relationships. But that's neither here nor there. Oh. The reason why Generation X is xenomorph, right? Yeah, yeah I don't know. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Gen Z, ninety-five to two thousand nine. Okay. Well, that's neither here nor there. She's young. <laughs> she's cool. She knows slang. What's some like slang words that you and your girlfriends use uh, amongst each other? Like, what's a word that you think is like lit? Oh, so I use it all unironically or ironically. What okay. That? What's the? What's that? I don't use it like seriously. Oh, you're talking about lit? Or just like any slang, like slay. Okay. Lit. I don't even, I can't even. You'll start you you've started using it ironically. It will turn into not ironically. Turns, yeah. That's when you know and you it, hit it becomes, 30. Yeah. yeah. You've never you've <laughs> never uttered no cap like and meant it. I don't think I've meant that one. Okay. okay. Ah. I've also my boyfriend is a hockey player, so I hear all of that slang, ah, which yeah. is just a whole new language. Right. Well, the reason why I bring up slang in the first place is because uh there's a whole list of words that an expert uh, at University of Michigan, Wayne State University, yeah, sorry, Wayne State University in Michigan, put together this long list of words that should be resurrected in 2024. Now, they're not slang words that have faded, uh, like, you know, jiggy or things like that. They're just very old words teetering on extinction, extinction but they're good words that we may want to bring back, and we could possibly bring them back as kind of like a new cool slang, but they're actual words. Mm-hmm. But when I say we... I can't, I don't say me over 40. I don't see, uh, I don't say you weirdo, uh, you know, like a 30 something year old housewife. And I don't say you Rico potential psychopath. No, I'm saying <laughs> you, uh, AR because you're 23 years old. So it's the kids that are going to make, uh, you know, the movement happen. So here's our first word, uh, blatherskite, blatherskite. Now Rico attempt to use blatherskite in a sentence. I went to go blather Skype on the way to get a Uber. I like how you said blather Skype, but it was Skype. It was Skype before the Skype, Skype call. Oh. All right. So what it means is a person who talks at great length without making much sense. <laughs> so Whoa! I am a blather Skype. Blather Skype. 
So whenever I start going on these rants, dude, and if I'm not making any sense, you need to call me a blatherskite immediately, and we'll know what it is, and I'll move forward, okay? Yeah, there's good. All right. Uh, the next word that's a long lost word that should be brought back in 2024, uh, Kerglaff. Kerglaff. It's spelled C U R G L A F F. Kerglaff. Uh, weirdo, attempt to use that in a sentence. Um, I was so per- put off by that Kerglaff last night. I just lost it. Okay. Uh, well, Kerglaff is the shock felt when you first plunge into cold water. Okay. So, this really does need to make a comeback considering ice baths are such a thing right now and, and cold dips. That's true. Have you ice bathed yet, Rico? No, I've I done yeah. the cryo chamber, but not that. Okay, mm. so does your uh, brother do that in L.A.? Do they have no, ice baths? he's probably done it once or twice. Probably. Well, probably. yeah, so Kerglaff is a word you got to give him a heads up on. Mm. Uh, he dove into the pool without thinking, and the Kerglaff caused him to shriek when he came up for air. So, oh, okay. all right, maybe Kerglaff will come back. All right, so here's uh, this one. Uh, this is a long lost word that uh, this expert is hoping will come back. Dollop, uh, dollop. Now, AR, attempt to use dollop in a sentence. Now, this is a word that I've actually heard recently. I feel like I've heard it in the commercial, like a little, like a small amount of something, like a little dollop of this. I yeah, still like use this word. I use <laughs> dollop, dollop and schmear. Yeah, I know. I'm like on bagels. Yeah, <laughs> right. But yeah, like a little dollop of salsa yeah. or dollop of yeah. sour cream. Right. Yeah. I still use this word. I don't think dollop is extinct, but at the same time, it also it could, could be, be an argument out. that you're old. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, dollop means a shapeless mass or blob of something, especially soft food. Mm. So, yeah. All right. Uh, so we got more on this list that we're going to continue here on the podcast broadcast. So if you want to find out what petty fogger means, join us youtube.com slash be vegan or keep it right here because we got more on the flip side after Incubus on Rock 1.2.1 KFMA. Clear. What right. was that word? Uh, petty fogger. A petty fogger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, you might have to hit the dump. No, no. <laughs> petty fogger. It is a fun word to say. Let me tell you right now. This is the second time I said it out loud. In my head, <laughs> I was having a blast. <laughs> right. a petty fogger? Petty fogger? I mean, it's... It sounds like petty fucker, but all right. I might have to. That's a challenge to start a fight in a bar. See if you can actually get a fight started by just saying that word to somebody. Petty petty fogger. Fogger. Oh, I'm sure. How would you uh, use petty fogger in a sentence? Right? Hey, you didn't pay for your tab, you petty fogger. Okay. <laughs> is it an insult? Well, yeah, I'm sure you say anything aggressively well, enough. It can come enough. Off as right. it. so, so it's an inferior legal practitioner, um, especially <laughs> one who deals with petty cases like better and Saul? has dubious practices. So, yeah, yeah kind of like a snake yeah, oil Saul. salesman. Wow. Yeah. Saul's so a- as in oh, he started fogger. with dreams of being the Supreme Court justice, but in practice, he was just another ambulance chasing motherfucking petty fogger. <laughs> And wow. So petty fogger is an insult. Write petty it down. Petty fogger. All right. Yeah. 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 All right. So, so kind of slimy and better easy. call Saul. Yeah. I think, uh, okay. Was the best uh, you know analogy that you could hey. come up with. Petty All fogger. Right. Uh, Cafique. You know, it's so weird. I've been able to pronounce these words pretty correctly, considering I can't pronounce words. Um, this one is a little more difficult, though. I spoke too soon. Cafique clashed. Clash. I, I have no idea how I'm going to pronounce this, so we'll move forward. It's a social <laughs> gathering where coffee is served. That's too long. Yeah, yeah. No. You're blather, Sky. All right, this one's two syllables. I'm all about it. All right. Uh, Pocky. Pocky. Now, it sounds Spell like hockey, it. but it's P-A-W-K-Y. I could have sworn that was like a snack food. Pocky? pocky. I've never heard of Pocky as a snack food. Like Japanese or something. All right. Well, I don't know. That's Pokey. Oh, no. Or Poke. Well, I mean, that's not a snack food. That's a delicious, like, entree, right? That's just sushi in a bowl. Uh, I feel like Pocky is, like, something that's, like, on your face. Stick. Like a zit or a boil or something. It, incorrect. What yeah. would you say? Pocky. Um, I mean, this is a good game. I don't even know. Some childhood game. Nope. It's having a mocking or cynical sense of humor. Oh, oh, okay. So he had a pocky that. wit that undercut his superior self-importance. I think we all get a little pocky sometimes. Mm-hmm. He was a bit pocky. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see another one. Oh, raw gabbit. Raw gabbit. Now raw you're gabbit. That sounds like a- <laughs> See, look at you. I know when you immediately think sexual thoughts, right? So I know the face that you yep. make. 
And with that, uh, I'm disqualified. Next guest. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not sexual. Okay. Damn. So, raw gabbit, AR, attempt to use it in a sentence. Raw gab, can you, can you spell it for me, please? Yes. It's the word raw, R A W, and gabbit, it's like rabbit, but with a G. Raw gabbit. Hmm. I feel like when a kid has like sticky fingers and they're like trying to touch a bunch of stuff. All right. That's possible. Okay. Uh, what do you say? Rico? I am at a loss. I have no clue. It's a person who speaks confidently, but ignorantly. <laughs> yeah. Why do I? I, I take offense Why to all these words. Like so many of the wor these words describing you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And I am offended at myself. A raw yeah. gabbit. God damn it. Yeah. So you, have new, words, you have new words to add to the resume now. Yeah, dude. I am. Uh, let's a see. A blatherskite? And yeah, a raw gabbit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you change your email tagger to be like those words? I'm a blather Skype and raw gabbit. Yeah, that's great. Son of a bitch. Uh, do me a favor, What was Rico. the petty fucker one, though? <laughs> it's Fogger. Fogger. Petty yeah, Fogger. Petty Got it. Fogger. You're making Son sure we don't bitch. get monetized. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, it's an inferior legal practitioner. That's the better okay. gossel. It's a fun word. It's a, That's such a fun word. Yeah, it's probably the most fun to say on this list. Uh, as opposed to uh, the raw gabbit, uh, what was the change your bio like right now? Change your Instagram bio to say that <laughs> all that. No, because I had a really good bio here. Oh. I need you to introduce a uh, creed real quick. Okay, Rico. No, Rico? What? Yeah. Why don't you want to do it? I thought you're a big fan of this song. This is big revival. It's a respect thing. I don't want to soil that. No, you're a radio DJ. So can you please introduce Creed's higher here? If you want to get higher, keep tuning to 1021 KFMA, because here's Creed's higher. All right. Okay. <laughs> See, that's what you get. Fair enough. All right. So, yeah, well, I forgot we didn't do any uh, voice track training. And, and yeah, DJ I, so I tried to tell you, but you just kept going. You want you to air check right flopper? now? You want to air check or no? No. Okay. God, fair no. enough. Okay. <laughs> we'll skip the air check and move forward. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So I was a raw gabbit. Um, that's for someone who speaks confidently, but ignorantly, which I'll have to probably relabel the podcast then. Um, and then the blatherskite. So a uh, blatherskite and raw gabbit. Pocky. Twinkle. Uh, you know what twinkle is? <laughs> twinkle. Twinkle is a word that they oh, want to bring started. back. Yeah, no, I want to get you started. What Sounds was... like something your uncle would say at Thanksgiving about somebody he sees on TV. Okay. Uh, what would you guys guess as far as twinkle? I think that's a good description. Just like describing someone that you want to like insult. No, uh, I mean, you were kind of close, but, uh, you know, you swerved off a little bit. I, I, you say that, and I'm just like, Con Conway Twitty? Like, what? <laughs> kind of. Okay, so Twinkle is twang with the fingers on a musical instrument. Oh. So he sat on his porch as dust rolled in, twinkling on an old childhood favorite uh, on the, uh, twinkling an old childhood favorite on the banjo. Twinkling. I was thinking masturbation of some sort, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, I weirdly didn't go sexual. I know, but that is why. All right, uh, last word, is, I'm going to end it with a fun one. That you guys could y'all use at home. Uh, it's called a thunder plump. All right, thunder plump. Now, are you thinking of a, like a girl from Miami with a giant ass? Because immediately yeah. I'm like, thunder plump. I'm, I, I want to hump thighs. that thunder plump. I just thought of thighs. Okay, thunder plump. How would you use thunder plump in a sentence, Rico? Man, did you get that new album, Thunder Plump? By, <laughs> by a certain rapper. Yeah. yeah, all right. All right. What do you say, weirdo? Um, as they stormed into the room with their attitude and their thunder plump. Okay. They AR? started throwing fists. I went a different route, uh, dropping a big old thunder plump in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. All right. So, thunder plump is a heavy fall of rain during a thunderstorm. As in, he hoped he could get home before the storm got too bad, but he found himself instead jogging through a soggy thunder plump, which again still sounds like poop. So, <laughs> like, that that weirdly like made the most <laughs> like that like offered itself up and we just totally did not get it yeah that's funny uh let's see yes the three syllable words so there are some words there uh, all right so real quick uh earlier this morning we talked with uh, justin spears gave us a rundown of everything that was happening in uh, the coach fish situation uh which is really good and i think this might be that clip but i could be wrong we'll find out check this out
Rock on 2.1 KFMA should be having a, joined by Justin Spears and Ali here in a minute or two. Talk about this whole Jed Fish a situation, former coach of UOA football, because it was announced this weekend that he is leaving us. Uh, he, mm. Yeah, he showed us a promised land. He said, hey, girl, this is how nice everything's going to be with me. Peace. They're like, no, <laughs> I just got used to winning again. Uh, but so sad. yeah, Rico's actually going to be taking off uh, towards uh, Southeast Asia yes, uh, tomorrow sir. morning. And now I say Southeast Asia because uh, it's not what Thailand or Taiwan. Um, is it Taiwan? No, no. I fly into Taiwan to bounce over to Bangkok and from Bangkok to Sam Reap, uh, Cambodia. Okay. So are wow. you going to do the majority of your stay in Cambodia? Uh, half and half. Kind of like traveling through Cambodia to get to Vietnam. Okay, yeah, and you're going to spend some time in Vietnam, which mm -hmm. actually I'm super jealous of, just because Anthony Bourdain paints a beautiful picture of mm -hmm. Vietnam. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and then as you're getting ready for this international flight, I assume this is going to be the longest flight you've ever been on, right? Uh, kind of. I went to Bali like in 2018. It's like the same, like 14 hour flights. There. Uh... Jesus. Uh, he's a, oh, he's an enigma. Uh, yeah, I know. He's an enigma, and don't ask questions because we'll never. It was get a answers. wedding. It wasn't like me going. On a, still though I still, adventure. no i i look yeah i mean the fact that you're able to go to these destination weddings i don't even go to my <laughs> friends weddings that i grew up with right. like, if they get married I in I sedona you know right. what i mean like yeah. that's too far for me yeah. and you go 14 hours across the world uh so <laughs> now that you're getting ready to fly uh, you know your algorithms kind of been pointing you in that direction <laughs> of uh, like pre-flight information did you come across a reddit thread recently oh, a, a neck pillow from wish.com exactly what i need yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, i just came across a reddit thread it's funny yeah so it's like this guy talking about people's obsession with the quality of flights yeah versus just being somebody who roughs it and just knows that it's like a magic airbus you can just endure basically <laughs> yeah. so it's like the guy's like maybe it's a me problem but a flight isn't much more than a bus it's a way for me to get from point a to b yes the seating may be uncomfortable and the food is probably s it's a flight i go into endure mode whether it's a two hour or a 14 hour flight it's a mode of transport not a flying hotel or amusement park right okay. and I, I do find it funny I, I i'm kind of the same way maybe that's just me in general people are like i'm sorry the bed's uncomfortable i'm like i can sleep on the couch i'm fine yeah. or the floor i'm that kind of person right it so does. when i hear people get uppity about like i can't believe the seats aren't you know plush or this or this i'm just like dude yeah, it does it's seem magic. like a first world problem, but mm -hmm. you know, we we actually have like rich friends who, when yeah. they do first class, they're like in this like bed. Mm -hmm. Spears, get in here, um, get in this like in this bed, like cocoon. No, into onto the mic, dude, uh, <laughs> and and they get treated and spoiled like uh you know spears uh co-host ali when they went out to uh saudi arabia or israel oh uh, with u of a uh they they were showing pictures of their flight experience and it <laughs> made you want to fly just because it, it's like a five-star resort in the sky mm -hmm. uh, you know but us normal people we're never going to get the yeah. experience maybe that's that. what i'm afraid of having that first class experience and everything will never be the same yes no, you, like, you should uh... you know, because i've had vip <laughs> experience in my life and I never want to go back, but I can't afford the VIP experience. I've lucked into it. I've been gifted it. And then just my circle is who I run with. Yeah. And then as soon as that circle like gets dried up or whatever, then I'm back to being like a normie. And it sucks. <laughs> back bro. to your place, poor. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's terrible. All right. Um, let's get into this. I've been killing time uh, preparing for our next guest in studio right now, Justin Spears from Spears and Ali Yeehaw. on ESPN 1490. You look a little upset. Uh, now, Justin <clears throat> is the official I beat writer of the u of a wildcats football program and he's tired for a reason i assume uh because you had a long weekend doing a lot of writing yep mm -hmm. now what is the deal with uh, coach fish tell me what happened in layman's terms um he's going to a new job he's he got a new job and he let he's leaving arizona now does uh, justin sound heartbroken right now because nope. i feel like he is no nope. you're I'm, not i'm tired dude honestly he's been working i mean i've been i've gotten five hours of sleep in the last two days because of Jed, Jed because, Fish. Because of Jed Fish. Wow. Are you mad at him? Um, I'm not. I mean, he's costing my sleep. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I had a personal plans that I had to cancel because mm. of this. Right. Uh, but listen, this is the, the crappy part about the college football business is that teams with bigger checks are going to come in and try to steal your coaches. And that's exactly what happened. And Arizona had a contract in place to keep Jed Fish as their new head coach. Uh, they had, they've been working on a contract since the end of the regular season, like in November. Right. And the $240 million financial situation um, pretty much led Arizona to stall giving Jed Fish's contract because they didn't want it to be a bad look for the university. So the, the Arizona Board of Regents, they didn't want to call for a special session. Mm -hmm. 
And because of that, Jed Fish didn't have a rework contract and it took months for Arizona to get into essentially the red zone to give Jed Fish his contract extension. And then Washington gave in, came in and gave Jed an offer he couldn't refuse. And now he's off to Washington and is likely to take a lot of members from the Arizona coaching staff and potentially a lot of players as well. Oh, no, because oh. a part of it was he was talking about the, yeah. you know, that we had 18 the starters that are going to return next uh, season and the, the future looked bright. And now that. He- oh, OK, I get weirdo back in here. Oh, we're back on Rock oh, 2.1 yeah. KMA. OK, OK. All right, so we're, you know, juggling here on the podcast broadcast real quick before we get into this next story. Uh, is it confirmed that Selena Gomez is going to play Linda Ronstadt in? Uh, I believe so. I or mean, is it just rumor? I, I think it's. Confirmed. Well, yeah, so I don't know for sure, but I, I it's have, the rumor circuit. It's confirmed, and it's going to have the Walk the Line producer as well on this project. Yeah, I have really said cool. this for years, that if you guys uh, really want to like uh, blow your mind, Google images of Linda Ronstadt as she was younger uh, in her 20s, and she does, or Selena Gomez does look exactly like her, uh, which... You know, again, is a forewarning to Selena Gomez. Be like, we know what you're going to look like when you get older. Okay, I've got a weird one. If they ever do an Ozzy biopic, I think they should go with Daniel Radcliffe. Look at pictures when Ozzy was really young. I could see that. More, than, more than Weird Al. Yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely more than Weird Al, more for sure. Al. Yeah, that's true. Um, Yeah, you think, and Radcliffe's not too old to play Ozzy, mm-hmm. you know? He just does a Harry Potter voice, but with a stutter, and like a drug-addled... <laughs> Radcliffe, sort of vibe to it. Radcliffe can pull it off. Can you know that off. for sure. Mm-hmm. And he already has like the uh, British accent. All right. Well, then on that topic, uh, who else do you want to see a biopic of? You got Linda Ronstadt. You got Ozzy Osbourne, which they, they're they not making one that we know of yet. They, they're they missing the boat on that because that seems like a wild story to tell. Uh, the difficult part is uh, asking Ozzy what happened during those years. because <laughs> exactly. He's not going to remember. Right. Uh, um, the one I don't want to see is the Amy Winehouse one. It looks terrible. Oh, is that in the process of being released? It should be out like next month. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I was looking through a piece of uh, controversies that happened, uh, you know, in the early 2000s that we already forgot about. One that was mentioned was uh, Neil Diamond Harris, MPH, mm-hmm. uh, and his uh, lover or partner, I should say. Uh, they had a Halloween party shortly after Amy Winehouse died and uh, the internet wanted to cancel them because uh, one of the entrees was a cake that was made to look like a dead Amy Winehouse toe tag and everything on it. Uh, the timing Ooh. of that was in poor taste and, uh, you know, of course people freaked out about it, but apparently forgot MPH still doing great. You know, yeah. I think this is even before his, uh, role on how I met your mom. So. Um, yeah, but, Yeesh. but that was a controversy that I could, I completely forgot about. Yeah. yeah. Oh. God bless the internet, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do you got for us, weirdo? Uh, so once I find out where I'm at again, um, so if you were to create an ad for aliens, mm-hmm. unlike come to visit th- th- uh, this place, go to Paris, go to London, like, where would you pick? Las like, Vegas. What, what Las is Vegas. the best city that the, that the planet has to offer? Hmm, Las I wonder, Vegas. <laughs> Rico, what would you say? Las Vegas. Okay. Las Vegas, all right. <laughs> just, I'm just like, it's so true. You it, have dude. all the different continents on one place. Mm-hmm. You have all the party. You have everything you could ever want in the world. Do you Las think, Vegas. okay, so do you think that's the best representation of humanity to uh, uh, alien species? It's the most Las honest Vegas? one. <laughs> okay. The most honest. <laughs> that's a strong argument, and it definitely does kind of uh, encapsulate uh, different backgrounds of the world all in one spot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Vegas would seem like a go-to destination in that. I'm sure life on other planets do visit. I mean, if they're going to come to the, the planet, they're going to hit up Vegas for sure. They'll probably hit up Ibiza, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, so, and then some other tropical paradises. You think Hawaii's on the list or they go to better islands? I, mean, I was uh, thinking New Zealand. New Zealand's beautiful. New Zealand always has an overcast. You know, Does it? it always seems cloudy to me. Yeah, but aliens love Lord of the Rings. So they're going to want to they're gonna <laughs> they wanna wanna go visit. to the Hobbit hole. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why did you ask this question? Well, there is <laughs> a travel ad that has basically told aliens, like, if you're going to go anywhere, you must go to Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, what the hell is even in Lexington? Let's Kentucky? find out. Do they have the Kentucky Derby there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is the Kentucky Derby there? Oh, don't get too distracted. Anyway, so yeah, so Lexington's tourism board is behind and it is a fun way to draw attention to the city and get more humans to visit. 
but they really did beam out the message. They got FAA to approve and sent a coded bitmap image yeah. with pictures representing prime numbers and the four basic elements of life. Yeah, we're mm, looking at it right sauce. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they show water and ethanol, uh, horses and human, and uh, iconic bluegrass uh, landscape. Uh, and then dopamine, they show that as well with the elements of life. That it, is what they sent out trying there. Trying to ease them in. I guess it looks like a screen grab from Oregon Trail. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know that's universal language there. I guess. Yeah. You know, uh, there is a video that they made. The I have dysentery and a UFO. Yeah. Well, let's let's see what the, uh, the well on Formula the podcast broadcast been. stream. Uh, we're gonna see the video that they put out for uh, aliens uh, to visit Lexington, Kentucky. Very odd. Uh, we're going to keep the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast. We'll play that video when we come back. We'll have your beef tips so you can stick around. It's Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. All right. Hey, are you not sick and tired of that Tom Brady commercial? Because I am up to my I'm up to my limit on that one. You the know what? One? I didn't so even pay attention it. to it. Oh, yeah. He's so bad. Uh, it's so annoying. Do you think he's going to start acting, acting or just collect all not. these? Uh, yeah. I hope not. Yeah. Well, let's hear what this uh, lady has to say about aliens visiting uh, Lexington, Kentucky. This is great. That we as a species have ever sent out a travel ad inviting aliens to come visit. Hey, aliens! Lexington, Kentucky just beamed the world's first interstellar travel ad into outer space. With the help of local scientists and scholars, Visit Lex created an advertising campaign designed to invite extraterrestrials to visit Lexington. Using a modified laser, the message was aimed at the TRAPPIST-1 star system 40 light years away. We're targeting the TRAPPIST-1 system because we might actually get an answer in somebody's lifetime if there's somebody there watching. But the reason uh, scientists have been interested in it lately is because of the large number of planets that it has and what it's considered to be the habitable zone. So there could be life there. Why not send a signal and see if they answer? The message contains yeah. a bitmap key with prime numbers, the elements of life, molecules for water, ethanol, and dopamine, plus horses and Lexington's iconic bluegrass landscape. The message also contained a collection of images representing Lexington a selfie from the transmission event, and an audio recording from local blues legend T.D. Young. <laughs> of all of the things that we've been beaming into space, why not a positive, friendly message? I think saying, hey, we're nice and friendly people, and we have horses and bourbon and dopamine, um, don't eat us. We have this new Sorry. hub of creativity. It's just people who get to have the freedom to think a little bit differently. It does seem as if it's this place that is very welcoming. Here's our chance to really demonstrate that we are a beautiful culture, a beautiful community, and that we want to share that with the galaxy, that we're the best place on Earth. The message was sent The galaxy, yes. I, but, I have a okay. conspiracy theory. All right, what's that? Hear me out. Okay, I'm okay, listening. The mayor of Lexington, Kentucky has a very boring sex life. He wants to try butt stuff, but his wife isn't into it. So <laughs> he's very shy to admit he wants to try butt stuff. So we're sending a thing out to the aliens so they can come do the butt stuff to them. So you think one of the prime number codes in there mm -hmm. is come to Lexington, Kentucky yeah. if you're into butt stuff. Well, By aliens way, are renowned for anal probing, right? That's the whole joke. Well, okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But those are <laughs> those are the grays. That and, was the joke. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, All right. <laughs> never Sorry. Mind. I mean, that was a long walk. Anyway, to butt stuff. There's also, a, I don't know if you guys already know about the Voyager Golden Record that went out in like 1977. Mm -hmm. They already, yes. Did we ever talk about that before? It's kind of funny what they put on that. Well, they, they showed our DNA code. Um, Is that what they did? Yeah. Yes. They showed our location. <laughs> and All the secrets. You know, what's great about that, though, is uh, we supposedly got a response in a crop circle. Uh, mm -hmm. And with the code talking about where it's from. And then we, we supposedly got it from one of the moons of, uh, I want to say Jupiter. Uh, showing her well, they showed location of life on planets. They showed uh, life in our solar system, and one of the moons in Jupiter and uh, Mars, I think, was on there. Um, Damn. Yeah, yeah. As far as life on the other planets, and you could you could go down the rabbit hole now. We don't have enough time for that, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was the a response. It, it was supposedly a response in a crop circle Damn. from that. Yes. Mm, I got to get high and look into that. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's a fun thing to get <sighs> into when you're high. Honestly. <laughs> 
Uh, well, they were very specific with choosing the chemical formulas that they showed because it is the main molecules in bourbon. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's great, though. It's like, hey, we're going to build a wall, uh, but hopefully your spaceship can get over our wall and visit Kentucky. Uh, but just visit, okay? Because what if they come and like, hey, we're moving in, guys. Thanks for the invite. We're like, oh, no, 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 no. We just wanted our tourism to go up, uh, but you got to go back where you came <laughs> from. You know, like in Kentucky, that's a strong argument. But <laughs> Rock 12.1 KFMA, welcome back to the show. Uh, we got to wrap things up here in just a couple of minutes as uh, we're hanging out here with an all-star panel, Rico. who It's Rico's last show before he goes to Taiwan. I'm very excited about Vietnam. that. <laughs> uh, Vietnam. You're going to stop in that Taiwan. I'm going to make no? some microprocessing chips while I'm there. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> Vietnam, Cambodia. Yeah. Excited. Nice. And of course, Weirdo, she's going to be in all week. And mm -hmm. AR, uh, who's with the Tucson Roadrunners, uh, a colleague of mine. And of course, there was a game last night, and there's a game tomorrow night, and there's a game on Friday, Saturday. AR, are you working on Wednesday? No. But Friday, okay. Saturday, I'll be there. Nice. Well, those are the bigger games anyways, yeah. you know, so we have uh, a lot of fun uh, plans for the Roadrunners happening this season, and they are kicking ass. Uh, I think second place right now in a division, but very close to first place. They've already won to, like their win loss ratio is two to one. So every two games they win, they lose one. Right. So they're like 22 and 10. Uh, so it's a very exciting time to be a Roadrunners fan to come on down and get in on the action before we get into the playoffs and knock on wood. Hopefully, Bring home that elusive Calder's Cup. All right, before we get into our, uh, well, before we wrap things up, I do have a beef tip that I want to share with you, and it's a, a little bit of a longer one, so I'm glad that I have the time. Uh, these are your five mistakes people make right after sex. Okay, uh -huh. so this will be the beef tip that I will leave you with because I feel like some of us make these mistakes, you know? Mm. Uh, like if... Off the top of your head, Rico, is there something that you felt like that you've done after sex that in hindsight, you're like, maybe I shouldn't have done that? Uh, not, yeah, paying money. Okay. That's paying. Like not leaving enough money. <laughs> not yeah, leaving a tip. Um, <laughs> AR, is there any uh, mistakes you feel like people will make right after they get it on? Not going to the bathroom. Not going to the bathroom Ooh. immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that way, if you go to the bathroom, then you won't get pregnant, right? No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, uh, what would you say as far as uh, mistakes people make right after sex? Uh, probably giving critiques right after instead of just you know, just lay in the afterglow. Okay. Yeah. You gotta work the core more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gotta work the core. <laughs> well, here are the five mistakes uh, that people make right after sex. Uh, number one, I think a weirdo was kind of onto something here. Negative comments. Like it's good to share turn ons and turn offs in general, but right after the deed is done, is isn't a great time for negative feedback. Right. So, right. Yes. Point out something that you liked. Be like, oh, I really like that this time, and then hopefully it sticks in that person's brain, and then they do it the next time. Right. Yeah. Like I really don't like how you look like you're having a seizure when you're on top of it. <laughs> Like, that's my finishing move. All right. Uh, number two, don't abandon ship, meaning don't immediately jump out of bed and grab a snack and try not to fall asleep right away either. I've been guilty of both <laughs> multiple times. Sometimes I fall asleep mid snack, but you like, keep the Lunchables right under the bed and immediately go for it. I don't know. The falling asleep thing like that to me is like, that's romantic. That's Sometimes like that's snuggle. Right. <laughs> like, you did so good. Right. Uh, you knocked me out. Right. I'm telling you. I'm yeah. going into oblivion. <laughs> Seriously, the amount of melatonin sometimes that is released after mm -hmm. a guy's orgasm is enough to put <sighs> you into a coma. Yes. So I understand that. Uh, and then the, after the turkey sandwich you ate. <laughs> yeah. The, the sweaty strut to the refrigerator right after is like kind of like not the walk of shame, but the walk of game. Like when you do a good job, you're like, yeah, I need some yeah. Gatorade. <laughs> That's a good feeling. I need some electrolytes. Right. Uh, but they say don't do that. Okay. All right. So here's uh, five mistakes people make right after having sex. Uh, they say don't reach for your phone, right? Agreed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Unless you want to watch the video you just took. <laughs> All right. Unless you're going to hit stop record. Yeah, work on this lighting. <laughs> Number four, don't mention your ex. So they say it's a never a good call in bed, but definitely not right after. <laughs> Uh, or while being intimate, like say, don't say like, Hey, that was good. But my ex was bigger. Uh, I, and then finally, uh, avoid talking about chores, chores, work, or your kids. Right. So mm -hmm. don't jump back into real life. Let yourself enjoy the moment. Bathe in the afterglow yes. as weirdo would say. Yes. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So those are your five mistakes people make right after sex. Try not to make any of those mistakes. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for the show, but you can watch it all in a return on demand at youtube.com slash beefvegan. AR, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. All right. And uh, Rico, 
Yeah. Fly safe, dude. Thank you. Rest you guys try to say fly safe for rock roll. You Later. Wish upon a side of beef. And now we're in that after really, we'll just think of it now. Yes. You are your beef. My legacy. If Thank you guys. Yes, I'm on your trip. I will knock out all your teeth. Aloha, as they say. Oh.